Good morning, everybody. Well, Carp was kicking back in his office. I woke up this morning really early. It's just one of those mornings where I couldn't sleep. And uh, get up, take a shower, make a cup of tea. And while I'm doing my morning things, I'm always thinking about something, you know, obviously, a particular subject. It's usually something that I wake up with on my mind. I think that I firmly believe, well, maybe not firmly believe, but strongly believe that our dream state, um, it, it, dreams are one of my favorite subjects, but the dream state is, um, is a secondary reality that helps you process information. Um, just like the old Freudian concepts, but that you don't remember your dreams for a reason. It's because your mind is working through issues. And then you wake up and you think about them, but you can't recall the dream. So, I was thinking about this guy, Murphy, who was my old boss. Back when I was like 17, 18, I was at 18, I think. It was my first job, my first real job, uh, besides like working at a pizza place. I got a job working with my buddy as a roofer. It was the most brutal, horrific job I'd ever had, especially living in the Pacific Northwest, you know, like roofers in California, uh, you know. I guess California has different rules. It starts raining, everybody goes home. Out here, it rains all the time. So, <laughs> you're up there on a shake shingle roof, uh, with covered with moss and slime, on like a 12-12 pitch, where you're, you know, standing in the pouring rain, tearing it off, and there's beehives, and... Anyway, point being that it really humbled me, after that, to future jobs. And uh, I became a carpenter after that, and spent the next 15 years basically on and off as a carpenter working for different people. And uh, I really love carpentry. I really don't like roofing. <clears throat> but I'm glad I did it. And uh, <laughs> it was a hell of an experience, let me tell you. So anyway, <laughs> the guy that owned the company's name was Murphy, and he was a friend of my friend's brother, my friend's older brother. And uh, they had grown up together. And at the time we were about 18 and I think they were probably about, you know, 36, something like that. You know, they're about my age. I'm 38, I think. Uh, and the guy treated us like shit. I mean, he treated us uh, like shit. <laughs> Um, I remember one day him saying, you know, show up to work early tomorrow because we're going to, we're going to go start early. And we, my friend and I got there at like a, a half an hour early, pounding on the door and we can hear him inside, just ralphing his guts out. And that was a regular occurrence for him. You know, he was a full blown alcoholic and, uh, not too long after I started working for him, he actually, he, there was no work to do. So he had us clean out his car. You know, us as kids, you know, you do that for bosses, you know, if that's what they want you to do, you do it. We're cleaning out his car and we must have found like four or five gram bags of coke. And I remember we found one, a little bindi of coke, of about a half gram, maybe a gram, and uh, it had obviously been there for a really long time, down on his floor, like smashed between some stuff. So we took it and uh, did it. <laughs> And uh, not that he would miss it or anything. I think we told him about it later. Uh, but he's like, oh, that's cool. Just an idiot. Now, looking back in retrospect, thinking, oh, my God, I worked for this guy. You know? And he had been a, a weightlifter in the past. So he was one of those big flabby guys that lost all his muscle. And uh, he was obviously picked on in school. You know, he probably had problems and he wanted to build an image. So he felt that he could pick on others later in life. And that's what he would do to us. So anyway, I come back to work from work one day. We went to a went for a really long day. It was a 12-hour day. 
in like 90 degree temperature, 100 degree temperatures, it was hot. Uh, and we were on this huge roof doing a, a tear off. And I got in kind of a dispute with the foreman. His name was Jody, and he was from like Alabama or something. It's just this totally hardcore racist southerner. Did not belong in our group. He had like a Ku Klux Klan tattoo on his arm and stuff. I mean, we couldn't stand the guy, you know. And he couldn't stand us either because we couldn't stand him. So I got back to work one day, and my boss says, uh, I said, so uh, how many hours did I get today? And he says, four. And I was like, I worked 12 hours. And he said, well, Jody said that you were only worth four or half of that or something because we got in a dispute, even though I did done my job completely. And I'd worked my butt off. You know, what do you do? You're a kid, you're young, you're 18, you don't know much better. You just say, screw it. I quit pretty quickly after that. But, um... You know, looking back on it, I think that was the thought that occurred to me this morning. It was him, like, because my buddy was like, "Oh yeah, Murphy's on Facebook. Uh, you want to see his picture? He looks like shit." I'm like, "No, I don't. I really don't want to have anything to do with the guy. It's been 15 years, <coughs> 20 years. Wow, time really flies, doesn't it?" The way I see it is, the guy still owes me two or three hundred bucks. So that was really the point of my talk here. I woke up and I was thinking about that this morning after he had mentioned he was on Facebook. I thought, well, if I saw him, the first thing I'd want, because I don't use Facebook, I hate it. Um, the first thing I'd do if I did see him was probably say, you know, where's my $2? If you get that reference, then right on. Um, <laughs> but I wondered if it's is that forgivable. You know, of course it is. You have to live and let go. You know, it's not like I hold it in and think he owes me 200 bucks. You know, I've let it go. It's way gone. It's in the past. I've talked to him since then, even. I've seen him at the bar, you know. <coughs> My buddy's uh, family owns a bar down there. And, uh, basically, it's been many, many years since I've seen him. And, um, I haven't thought about it at all until this morning. And the reason why, I guess, it's, um... came to mind is I was thinking about people who hold grudges and um, you know on top of that you know that being ripped off by one boss was nothing man I've had some experiences in my life you know I have been you know I've had good friends like good friends that I was trying to take care of I always wanted to help people out and let them stay with me and naturally the people who need a place to stay can often be those who have major drug problems um, such as tweakers in this case, and, and I got a bunch of my stuff stolen from friends. In fact, twice, and I forgave, allowed them back into my house and had them steal from me again. And then I forgave them later. And it took me quite a while to build back my trust in society. Um, there was a period of my life where I actually went hunting for the guy every day. I would walk around town looking for the guy that ripped me off. You know. I remember confronting the other guy that had written me off one time. He stole my father's, um, it was a necklace my mother had given to my, or my father, I think my mom had given to my dad, and uh, anyway, my father had recently passed away. He knew this, he stole it out of the dish, and then I called his girlfriend and told her about it. Just to say, hey, just in case, Chris has been weird, you know, if this turns up, please let me know, it's very important. She called me a few days later saying that he tried to give it to her as a Valentine's Day present. And I can only imagine the look on his face when he went to give her this awesome gold necklace and she said, this is Josh's dad's. <laughs> and uh, he got all upset, they broke up. She ended up not giving him back the necklace uh, and she, we met up and she gave it back to me. I, and I ran into him on Hawthorne Boulevard one time. I was with a couple of my friends and we were just walking up the street and there he was sitting in front of coffee people with some guy that we'd never met before. He was basically outcast from the group, you know, after that. And uh, I walked right up to him while he was sitting there and he looked up at me, just the look on his face was priceless. And uh, I said, don't worry dude, I'm not going to kick your ass. And his question was, why not? <laughs> and looking back on that, it's a good question, because I'm a nonviolent person, 
and nothing was ever solved by fighting with somebody over something unless you have to. And uh, sure, it would have made me feel better to knock him out, but I chose to take the high ground and I said, I'm not going to fight you. I said, you're a waste of my time and everybody's around here. And there were a lot of people around because uh, it's a hangout for the hippies on Hawthorne. And I looked around and I said, you see this guy? And I screamed and I said, you see this guy? He's a thief and a liar and he's a piece of shit. Don't associate with him. And I walked off. And uh, never saw the guy again. Never saw him again. Never came back to town. He moved away. Went to um, Connecticut, I believe. And I found this out later because I looked him up, found him, and forgave him. Major important thing in life to forgive the people that wrong us. Can we extend this to the political arena a little bit? I'm really trying to to build a basis for passive behavior. Not passive in the sense of just ignoring the problem, but rather not becoming all over agitated and getting yourself upset and angry about things that you can't do anything about. Somebody's already wronged you move on, you know, but uh, some of us can't move on. Sometimes what the person did was just too horrific and we cannot let it go. And that I can understand, Some, you know, if a person is physically abusive or extremely verbally abusive in your life, that's very difficult to forgive over a period of years. But a lot of people have been browbeaten over the years and uh, some of the issues that people have are issues that we can't just turn away from um, and that they can't just turn away from and not not everyone can so easily forgive and forget looking back at my earlier life when I was you know in my teen and 20 years I was a pretty peaceful easygoing person I always chose to talk my way out of a fight rather than fight I was never trying to prove anything to anyone. I was that um, kind of alternative skater kid that just did my thing with my little group, two or three friends. Um, and so I, I was pretty much, I was a very forgiving person, I guess. But once I got ripped off, then everything changed. And looking back on my mentality during that period of time, I was pissed off at the world. And now that I can look back on this with a clear head, I can see the pattern that I was a very happy, outgoing person for a long time. I got ripped off by a few friends. I became hostile towards people, not just people in general. I was still friendly to people, but um, I was very untrusting. I didn't want anyone in my house. You know, I didn't want to meet anyone or make any new friends. And I can only see this in retrospect. And uh, I tended to uh, distance myself from attachment with friends or, with, or, or trust because, uh, and, and also during that same period of time, uh, thinking about it now, I was way into the Illuminati kind of stuff. That entire time of my life, from the time when it happened till the time when I forgave and forgot, I was obsessed with governmental conspiracies and how we were being wronged and how the world was being wronged and this is my personal take but you know looking back on it I see that I had been wronged and I was trying to take it out on the world a very complicated world that doesn't have solutions like you know just get rid of these guys and everything will be okay you know, critical critical thinking later in life led me to realize that um, there are no easily solvable issues there is no magic pill for the world's problems. But I forgive everyone and I forget all these problems because and I'm talking about my personal you know, life when people wrong me or I get wronged. Um, often we let ourselves be beaten down metaphorically or physically because we're afraid to fight back and then we get angry at ourselves later for not doing anything about it or defending ourselves. But sometimes it's something we just can't do anything about which is in the case of a lot of abuse cases. Um, but all of these create trust issues. Once I learned to trust and love again, everything else fell by the wayside. 
I don't stress. I don't feel butterflies in my stomach or anger towards people when they call me a name or pick at me like I may have when I was younger. You know, always had to, always had to prove my point when I was younger. Always had to be right. You know, and I'm just glad today I can admit that sometimes I'm wrong and be cool with that and uh, and learn to trust because it's not just about trusting other people. Once you learn to trust the world, you learn how to trust yourself. And that, my friends, is something we could use more of. Or maybe less of, depending how you look at it. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people trust themselves a little too much. But uh, trust your intuition. Forgive and forget. And if you have people who have wronged you, try to let it go if you can. And you'll live a happier life for it. So, namaste, everybody.